Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. Sebastian Vettel has raced in Formula 1 for the very last time, or at least what is very likely to be the very last time. If Nico Hülkenberg can get a race seat for 2023, then nothing is out of the question. Even though I already did a video listing Sebastian Vettel's best five wins, I thought we'd take a more detailed look at his long career and what may lay ahead for the four-time champion. So consider this a tribute to the career of Sebastian Vettel. He's not dead, he has just retired. So with that, remember to subscribe to the channel for more motorsport content and let's begin. Sebastian Vettel was born in Heppenheim, Germany. He actually has a younger brother who is also a race driver, Fabian Vettel, who you never really hear about and probably has a deep-seated resentment towards Sebastian. He has raced in a few GT championships, most recently the ADAC GT4 series, and he has never reached the heights of his older brother. Sebastian began karting at the age of three, when most kids do well not to throw up on themselves. He began competitive karting at the age of eight, and at the age of 11 was part of the Red Bull Academy program. He made his car debut in 2003, still only 16. He won five races in the Formula BMW ADAC, and finished second in the championship beaten by 2021 DTM champion Maximilian Gotz. Vettel won the BMW ADAC championship a year later, winning all but two races, and moved on to Formula 3 in 2005. His success in the BMW series earned him a Formula 1 test drive for Williams and later the BMW Sauber team. He was Formula 3 Rookie of the Year in 2005, whilst also getting on the podium at his first attempt at the Macau Grand Prix. In 2006, still in the Formula 3 Euro series, he put a title challenge in, taking four wins and pushing eventual champion Paul de Resta all the way. Vettel would start 2007 in Formula Renault three and a half with Carlin, but only competed in seven races, taking one win. Even though he missed 10 races, he still finished fifth overall. His early form was championship winning, but Sebastian Vettel left the series behind because Formula One was calling and he absolutely had to answer the phone. Sebastian Vettel made his debut for BMW Sauber in 2006, doing a few test sessions and breaking records straight from the outset. He got the quickest fine in Formula 1 history, 9 seconds into his debut for speeding on his way to the track. Maybe a little over eager there. He was at the time the youngest Formula 1 participant ever, and got the quickest time in practice in the second Friday session. He then set both quickest practice times at the Italian Grand Prix. His full debut came about due to unfortunate circumstances. Robert Kubica was injured in his crash at the 2007 Canadian Grand Prix and Vettel was his stand-in at the US Grand Prix. He performed well and impressed many, finishing 8th and in the points, the youngest ever to do so at the time. BMW released Sebastian Vettel so he could join Toro Rosso to replace Scott Speed, who wasn't living up to his name. He didn't score points in his first few races but was running as high as third in Japan at Fuji when he crashed into the back of Mark Webber in the rain under a safety car. Webber didn't have many nice things to say about his future teammate calling him a kid and blaming Vettel's inexperience. However, on inspection, it was attributed to Lewis Hamilton's behaviour under the safety car, and Sebastian Vettel bounced back in China with a fourth place and his first points for Toro Rosso. 2008 did not start great. Vettel was taken out in a number of first quarter incidents. It scored his first points for a decent fifth at Monaco, and the second half of the year was much kinder. This peaked at the Italian Grand Prix. Sebastian Vettel managed to stick his Toro Rosso on pole and then won the race. It was an incredible drive in the very unfancy Toro Rosso, and I'm sure at this point everyone and their dog had Vettel pegged for big things. There were other good drives, especially at the final race in Brazil, passing Hamilton and almost costing him the title, although a slowing Timo Glock was overtaken by both Vettel and Hamilton around the final corner as the track got wetter. Vettel finished the race 4th and the championship 8th overall. He was promoted to the main Red Bull team for 2009 and with sweeping technical changes it was basically a clean sweep for everyone. Red Bull had never really been a front running team with Mark Webber and David Coulthard, they had been midfield at best. Now that was about to change and the perfect time for the rise of Sebastian Vettel. He took Red Bull's first F1 win at China, followed by three more that year, all whilst chasing down the brawn of Jensen Button for the championship. Button had enjoyed an early advantage, but Sebastian Vettel was closing in. He finished just 11 points behind Button. If the season was as long as it is in 2022, then he would have been champion. 2010, as it turned out, was going to be even better. 
Sebastian Vettel never led the championship in the 2010 season, not until after the last race of the year, which traditionally is the best time to lead the championship. It looked like a straight fight between Fernando Alonso and Mark Webber going into the final race in Abu Dhabi. It had been a tough year for Vettel and his partnership with Webber had been tested on track. There was the incident in Turkey when Vettel ran into the back of Webber again, whilst Red Bull looked on for a 1-2. The Silverstone front wing debacle, when a new front wing was fitted to both Red Bulls and Vettel was damaged, with no spares they gave him Webbers. Webber then won the race, not bad for the team's number two driver. Going into the final race, Vettel was 15 points behind the Ferrari of Fernando Alonso and seven behind teammate Mark Webber. Alonso pitted and got stuck behind Vitaly Petrov. Mark Webber recovered him and also got stuck, leaving Sebastian Vettel to win the race and the championship. 2011 was a complete domination for Vettel, 11 wins in 19 races, even with the FIA banning engine mapping and blown diffusers in an attempt to slow him down. Sebastian Vettel powered home to retain his championship. Fernando Alonso began a renewed challenge in 2012 in his Ferrari. Sebastian Vettel's biggest enemy though was reliability. His Red Bull broke down a lot in 2012. After issues at Valencia and Monza, Alonso had nearly 40 points over Vettel. An impressive second half of the season meant Vettel had 4 points over Alonso going into the final race for Brazilian Grand Prix. After an incident with Bruno Senna, Vettel had to climb from the back of the field and managed to finish 6th, just 3 points ahead of Alonso to take his third championship. 2013 was another dominating year, ending with his run of 9 wins in a row, a record in Formula 1 and for comparison, Lewis Hamilton with the most dominating car in F1 history only ever managed 5 in a row. However, as good as 2013 was, 2014 was a massive downturn in fortunes. Sebastian Vettel never got to grips with the RB10, he had constant reliability issues throughout the year. New teammate Daniel Ricciardo outpaced him in qualifying over the year and took the team's only wins. Sebastian Vettel left Red Bull at the end of the year to begin his dream journey with Ferrari, emulating his compatriot and hero in red, Michael Schumacher. In my mind, what started as a dream turned into a nightmare as Sebastian Vettel joined Ferrari at one of their biggest downturns in results and during the start of the Mercedes era. 2015, he was described as a title contender but he never really was in contention. He managed to win his second race at Malaysia for the Scuderia, his first for over a year and Ferrari's first for two years. He took two more wins and finished third in the championship a long way off Mercedes, but still a miraculous season for where Ferrari were. 2016 was much worse. There were a lot of crashes, mostly with Daniel Kvyat and reliability issues with the ugly head again. No wins and fourth in the championship. Ferrari turned up to race in 2017 and did incredibly well at the start of the season. They broke two important ducks that year. Vettel and teammate Raikkonen locked out the front row at the Russian Grand Prix, the first time in nearly a decade for Ferrari, and then Sebastian Vettel won in Monaco, the first time a Ferrari had won there since 2001 with Michael Schumacher. Vettel led the championship until the Italian Grand Prix, after which reliability issues once again destroyed his season as well as a first lap crash with Raikkonen and Verstappen at Singapore. By the end of the year, his title hopes were in tatters, but honestly, it was always an uphill battle against Mercedes. Vettel finished runner-up, so at least beat one silver arrows, that of Valtteri Bottas. In 2018, Sebastian Vettel again drove well at the start of the year, but it all came to nothing after crashing out of the German Grand Prix whilst in the lead. After that, again his title hopes vanished, with Sebastian Vettel starting to make the mistakes he has sort of become famous for in recent years. Basically, he started spinning a lot more often. 2019 was a tough year for Ferrari. Charles Leclerc replaced Kimi Raikkonen as Vettel's teammate, but Sebastian was off the pace. He spun a lot and made a lot of mistakes. He took his final Formula 1 win in Singapore, but only finished the year 5th and behind his new young teammate. 2020 was to be his last year and after the delayed start, Ferrari were very much off the pace of even the midfield teams. Sebastian Vettel spent his final Ferrari year struggling to score points at most Grand Prix. His best result was third in Turkey and he finished 13th overall. His worst year since 2007 when he only competed in 8 races and still managed to finish 14th. His time at Ferrari was over and frankly it was all a bit of a letdown. He joined Aston Martin in 2021, an ambitious team but very much rooted in the midfield. He made more overtakes than anyone in the 2021 season and scored a few points here and there. 
He finished second in Azerbaijan and also in Hungary, but was disqualified for not having the fuel to give a sample. He finished 12th overall. No podiums came in 2022, although once again he beat teammate Lance Stroll, and this proved to be all for Vettel. As he retired from Formula 1 after the last race at Abu Dhabi, where he took his final F1 point. In his whole career of 300 races over 15 years, Sebastian Vettel only lost out to his teammate three times in the overall championship. In 2014 to Daniel Ricciardo and 2019-2020 to Charles Leclerc, he took 53 wins and 122 podiums, more than a third of the races he entered. He will always be a legend of Formula 1, with some records still intact that will never be beaten, including youngest Formula 1 world champion ever. So what happens now? He's only been retired a couple of days. He is listed to compete in the Race of Champions in January 2023. Beyond that, he has stated no plans. He wants to spend some time with his family, which is understandable. If he does want to make a return to motorsport, then I think the World Endurance Championship would be a great fit for him. Especially with Ferrari and Porsche joining, either team would love to have Vettel. Imagine a Ferrari at Le Mans with Seb Vettel and Mick Schumacher. DTM as well, maybe. It is a German series, technically. But I don't see too much full-time competing. Maybe a role in the FIA. I can see that being up Sebastian Vettel's alley also. Especially maybe an environmental role. Whatever happens, Sebastian Vettel was the greatest driver in Formula 1 for a number of years, and during that run of 9 wins, he was one of the best ever. Lewis Hamilton has never been better than the Sebastian Vettel that ended 2013. Vettel never really kept that up. I don't know, but in my opinion, confidence affected him a lot more than other drivers. When everything is great, he's great. When it goes wrong, he crumbles. Whatever happens, 2022 ends with us saying goodbye to a true legend of Formula 1. So that was a career retrospective for Sebastian Vettel. Leave your best Vettel moments in the comments below, whether they're in a Formula 1 seat or out of it. Let me know what you think comes next for the German. Remember to subscribe, even as motorsport comes to an end for the year, there will be ever more content on this channel. Leave a like and tell your friends, thank you for watching and have a good one.